All righty. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to TV 35 Sports here on a Thursday night, Labor Day weekend, opening season for high school football 2024. We have the Perth Amboy Panthers visiting our very own JFK Mustangs here in Island. Uh, both teams are part of the Big Central Football Conference. Uh, one is in the uh, Silver Division, and I believe Perth Amboy is in the Liberty Division. We'll catch up with that later. But with any opening season game, you figure from the last game of last season to now, all of the players that are currently on both teams are focusing on this game. So there's a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of hard work in the offseason between strength training and conditioning. That could be true for any team, but especially for football. Along with all that training and preparation is enthusiasm. Right now, everybody is undefeated. Records are 0-0. Uh, so it's very exciting. Both teams, you know, are trying to find their footing. I believe the Mustangs won one last year against J.P. Stevens. Uh, and I think Perth Amboy beat the Mustangs last year. Uh, and also beat J.P. Stevens. So both teams, as I said, trying to find their footing. We've got a wonderful night for football. We've been going through a little bit of a hot spell, as most of you know. Tonight's a cool night with a little bit of a breeze blowing. Um, Perth Amboy just left the field right now. So again, we should have a very good matchup. It's very exciting. For me personally, I graduated from JFK many, many years ago, played football on this field before it was a turf field. Uh, but I was the athletic director at Perth Amboy for 25 years. So it's really exciting for me and an honor to be here. So I hope you'll stick around, uh, enjoy the game, and, and we'll try our best to broadcast it for you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Big Central Football here at John F. Kennedy High School in Island, hosting the Perth Amboy Panthers. First game of the season, I think, if you're in the world of athletics, you would refer to this as week zero. Uh, it is an early start for you high school football fans. It's a, a, a recent thing to start playing football in, in uh, August, uh, but it's all based on the playoffs and playing the play, uh, the, the um, the playoffs in uh, before the uh, Thanksgiving season. But uh, it's a great honor to be here. I'm Greg Ficara. I'm a councilman and part-time sports broadcaster. Um, my good friend and colleague, Stefan Lally, will be here to join me. He is a uh, former Woodbridge Baron football player. I, by the way, am a former from a long time ago. JFK Mustang played on this very field, but certainly not on the turf. And there's our kickoff. Perth Amboy down to about the 20, fielded by number 11. And taken all the way out to the 36-yard line. That was a nice return. That's a Grant Lorenzen is a name that you will probably hear a lot about um, throughout the game. Uh, according to Coach uh, Henderson, uh, Grant was, as a sophomore, was all division in, in three sports. Uh, Grant, by the way, number 11, was a sophomore, all division football, basketball, and baseball player. Uh, coach calls him a renaissance man. So here we go. First play from the line of scrimmage. Signals are silent. We have a quick screen. The Panthers sniff it out. We had a gain of about one yard. Look like uh, Taylor Zachary is the quarter. Oh no, wait, let me just check on that. Numbers are a little tough for me to see out here. Mustangs back in the huddle. Not even a yard gain on that play. Mustangs, uh, twins on the right hand side, split left, single backfield, motion, sliding motion. Straight hand off inside, and a gain of a few yards. Looks like that was, uh, trying to get the numbers here, folks. I'm working by myself for now until Stefan Lally gets here. Certainly, uh, I can tell you that uh, number one, Lee Tobin is going into the game. There's our quarterback, that is uh, number two, 
Richie Trotman the third. Once again, same formation, twins right. Drops back for a pass. And they're saying an incomplete, but if he caught that, it would have been a first down. That was a well-designed play, a little bit low. Lorenzen had to go very low to go down and get that. Didn't come up with it, but uh, you know I think it was a good move. Looks like it's going to be number 11, Lorenzen, back to kick the ball for the Stangs. A little run to kick the ball. Very nice kick, almost over the head. Nice return by the Panthers. Um, Brandon Bradshaw with that return, number one for Perth Amboy. And then he swarmed. Perth Amboy has a good field position. It appears they're on the 41 yard line. Although now they're backing it up to maybe the see where they finally place it. I have the benefit of being next to longtime uh, um, announcer for the Mustangs, Coach Cantala. He's been here forever. He's a wonderful person, wonderful coach, member of the Woodbridge Township Athletic Hall of Fame. Oh, so we have a penalty. The ball's brought back to the 29-yard line. Let's get a little couple of numbers out here. Uh, Lee Tobin, number one. I see him on the corner. Just start rattling some out as I see him. Running around the end. Jameer Campbell, number zero, in on that play for the Mustangs. I also see uh, number six out there, Jaden Franz. I see number uh, 13 on defense, Aiden Roach. Number 33, Dylan Driz. Panthers in their typical shotgun. Number four with the run. Number four for Perth Amboy is Ricardo Enriquez. What a nice run. Pickup of about, uh, geez, seven yards. I see number 55 out there, E.J. Kaminsky for the, for the Mustangs. I see, uh, I don't know if I mentioned number seven, Emilio Ruiz out there on the other side on the corner. Uh, number eight, Naeem Nuse. In the middle, Panthers back on the ball with a single setback, shotgun, slot to the right, split left, low snap, quarterback draw, but he's caught up by the center part, close to a first down on a second effort. So that is a first down uh, for the Panthers on a real tough run there by the uh, large, the, the, the big uh, quarterback for Perth Amboy. Number seven, and that is uh, Le'Veon Baltazar. And the Panthers go up to the line. They have a slot on both sides with a single back, so it's very split offense, spreading the field out, and we go motion across, and they hand off the ball to the motion back, and that is uh, number one, Brandon Bradshaw. Bradshaw. I am joined, as I promised, my good friend and colleague, Stefan Lally, is here. Uh, we like him, even though he played for Woodbridge, but uh, <laughs> welcome him to the booth. Another football guy, and we're, we're happy that you can make it, and thank you, and I'm glad you're here safely, Steph. Thank you, thank you. There was an accident on the parkway, and I was a little bit delayed, but thank you for the warm welcome. And not a bad play design with the jet sweep. Yeah. Picked yeah. up a few yards. 
Hopefully I didn't miss anything too exciting on the drive down. No, no, we, we did the opening without you. We managed, but everything is good. Wow, we got trips to the right this time for the Panthers. This looks like it could be a passing formation. Yes. And there's a penalty. Thinking a false start? False start. Absolutely. And they'll take it back five yards. The uh, Perth Amboy quarterback, Steph, the, this uh, uh, Le'Veon Balthazar is a big fella. Gosh, they have him listed as, let's see, where is he? They got him listed as 6'4", 215. I, that's a pretty good. Very good. Right? I mean, that's I a thought I'd be 6'4", and then I stopped 5'8 at my freshman year and did everything. <laughs> tried vegetables, tried vitamins, and nothing worked. Yeah, but you turned out good anyway, my friend. Thank you. Thank Look you. at the size of this guy, and he can run. He just gallops. And glides almost to the first down. I think he's a little bit short, but we'll see how they'll rule it down on the field. Yeah. Boy, he, and his he, his running was more of a gallop than anything, right? He had his eyes downfield, and he just kept his feet moving. It looked like a nice glide when he got into stride. Yeah, absolutely. Getting back to the Mustangs, I, I did say uh, Niam Muse was in on that play, number eight. I also see, I don't think I mentioned or did I, number 33 I did, uh, Dylan Driz is out there. I'm trying to capture some of the Panther names, I mean the Mustang guys out there. While you were covering for me, how did the Mustangs look on offense? Um, they they were versatile, but they, you know, it was three and out. They didn't get a first down, but right. some good attempts. Another false start. Right yeah, there's a lot of moving parts there when they go in motion, right? right? And early in the year, there's always that potential for that to happen. I mentioned, Steph, that, um, you know, both teams are really, this is a big year. They're trying to find their footing. Right. The Mustangs, I think, won two last year. They beat the Panthers. They beat J.P. Stevens. I believe that was it. And the, and the, the, the Mustangs only beat J.P. Stevens in a consolation game. So... Both teams are well coached, and um, you know they're really trying to, as I said, get their footing and get back on track. And that's the beauty of the excitement of a new season, full of promise, full of opportunities. Yep, you could have done the opening with me. That's exactly what I said. <laughs> yep, we're thinking the same thing. We're on the same wavelength. I'm trying to get on your level, Bob Costa. <laughs> yeah. Drops back for a pass. Oh yeah, he swarmed a couple of players there. Number five is uh, is my neighbor, actually, Manny Perez Quijano. For a minute there, it looked like the quarterback could have escaped out of the pocket. He looked like he made something happen, but eventually, as you said, he was swarmed. Somebody got his ankle, Steph. That's what happened. I saw he he, I, he almost lost his shoe, but that was a a great play by the defense swarming him there, and that that's something that. Uh, the Mustangs needed because the the Panthers had a few first downs in that in that drive. And it looks like the quarterback's also the punter. Oh boy, yep. Number seven, Le'Veon Balthazar. That's the beauty of high school football. Do it all players. Yeah. Similar like Travis Hunter in Colorado. Oh yeah, absolutely. Timeout on the field. I'm wondering if JFK's taking a timeout. Wondering with the quarterback as the punter if there's a play fake coming. Yeah, right. You always have to consider that. Yeah. Well, that's the same thing. The one of the key players for the Mustangs, mm -hmm. uh, number 11, Grant Lorenzen. Uh, I, I had mentioned when we started the broadcast just before you got here, he was a three sport athlete. Wow. As a sophomore, all division in all three sports, football, baseball and basketball. Wow. Uh, you know, he's just an athletic young man, but he's the punter. So you can consider the same thing. They're, they're dangerous. Those kind of guys back there. Oh, absolutely. Week one, not a lot of film on your opponent, so you can't really take anything for chance. Right, right. Number 10 for Mustang, for the Mustangs, a late entry into the game, and that is Leo Sedesi. And uh, the Mustangs with two returners out for the punt. Grant Lorenzen is one of them, number 11. And that's a solid punt. Yep. Takes Whoa. the friendly bounce. All right, that's it. Got lucky there. Remember on bounces like those, we, as a player, we'd call poison. Oh, yeah, get, get the heck out of the way. way. Of yeah. yeah, you didn't want to be that guy that the ball <laughs> touched. You didn't want to be that guy. I know in my world that you, you would get that look from Coach Osborne, man. Oh, yes, you wouldn't want to make eye contact with him. If you were that guy, it would be the best weight loss program the next practice. <laughs> I don't know what would happen, but you lose a few pounds. 
Absolutely. So the Mustangs take over somewhere around the 28-yard line, looks like. And uh, their quarterback, again, number two, Richie Trotton, is back there. Single back, uh, number four, is Fahim Howell, the junior. See as they get in position to take the snap. Hand off. Good run, couple of yards. Nice four yard carry. For Fahim Howell, number four. On the line out there, I'm trying to look some of the big big boys. I see uh, number 54, Justin Calderon out there. You know, a lot of times in these week one games, you, you, you a lot of teams just like to keep it on the ground, yeah. play it safe and grind it out that way. And I think we'll see a lot of that tonight on both sides of the ball. Yeah, yeah, you would think that, but with number 11 here, Grant being the, the you know, probably the top athlete on the team, you got to get the ball in his hands, I would think, right? Oh, boy. He was trapped there. And it looks like what they gained on the last play was taken back by the Panthers' defense. Yep. That A was... whole host of them on the tackle. And it just looked like the play was blown up from the start at the line of scrimmage. Yeah. That, that was a tough one. Third and five, Mrs. Cantala, the uh, field announcer here, just announced. It's always good to have her because she's on top of things. You know, just, listen, just listen to Nancy and you'll, you'll pick it up. Her and her binoculars. A little play action. Nice play. Looks like a first down. Like Grant Lorenzen, as you called it earlier, for the first down. Yep. Drew Gray Singh, number 50, is out there. And I also saw number 68, uh, Brendan Denty on the offensive line out there for the Mustangs as they get a new set of downs. Approaching midfield, they're right around the 40. See Panthers with one safety back, looks a little bit man coverage, cover one most likely. Straight hand off again to Fahim, but they're all over that. But he Bring finds a way. Might have had it if he t if he ducked a little further to the edge. Yeah. It didn't look like the the Panthers defense had it sealed off, but he's on the field. He saw something. We well, obviously he, did. He, he did a good job of uh, moving it around, but he must have ran 15 yards and yeah. and lost five, right? So. I 50, saw 50 play. As a coach, they always say keep your feet moving, right? And he, yeah. he kept them moving. Yeah, absolutely. I saw number uh, for Perth Amboy number 54. Uh, let me check on that. I have my glasses on, and it's hard to see this stuff. I wish they would give us a bigger. <laughs> 54 was uh, Edgar Estevez on that play. Another here. handoff. Another good one here. He really hit the hole hard on that one, Steph. That's, I think that's the key, keeping those shoulders squared and running downhill. About an eight-yard gain, third and four, it looks like, on the field. And, and the offensive line, a great job making that hole, as you mentioned. For third and two, as I've been corrected. Lorenzen is wide on this side of the field. Quarterback keep. Looks like he's going to pick it up. Nice job by the Stangs. First down. That was a heads-up play by Trotman on that one, Stefan. He he really had his head up and was just looking and managing the field very well. He was absolutely. Uh oh, and he's down though. He's just he's down on the ground right now. That would be a devastating blow. Ah, oh, he popped right. Still down. Still yeah. Down. Yep, he's down. All right. So let's see what I have here. So interesting enough. The Mustangs are now in the big central silver division, which is a little different. They're in there with Governor Livingston, New Brunswick, North Plainfield, and South Plainfield. Uh-huh. You know what, Steph? Let's take a look at this play, folks. We have a replay. We don't like to see people getting hurt, but uh, we'll take a look at it again.
Okay, we. I'm sorry, folks. We could. I, I'm sure you saw the replay. We did. We we're not getting it on our screen up here, so we couldn't give you our comments on it. But uh, he's getting up under his own power with a little assistance. He's got a little limp going on, and it appeared that the backup quarterback will be number 13, and that is uh, Aiden Roach. So we'll see how Aiden does, and we'll see. Um, how it goes as far as Trotman coming back in the game because obviously he's a key component here. But it's always good to see a player go off on their own power. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. So folks, number 13, Aiden Roach now in charge of the Mustang offense. And we have a first down and 10. Got trips closest to our side of the field. There's a whistle calling timeout. I don't know what that means. Maybe it's an equipment issue. Yep, does it looks like somebody didn't have some piece of equipment, so they're sending out now number 77 is going out there, and that is big Melvin Tejada. And he is a senior 5'10, 255. That's a that's a big fellow right there. Yeah, absolutely trips closest to our side folks that means three wide receivers which kind of spreads the field out fumble on the first play and a good play by the running back to scoop up the fa the fumble yeah but that's tough when a backup quarterback comes in and you don't have enough time to do practice snaps especially coming out of the shotgun yep yep absolutely yeah it's a it's tough you know, when you go, I mean, you know, when you're a quarter, when you're a backup player, you're supposed to be ready because it could happen at any time. So. And the left guards swap back positions. Six, yep, I think 68 is back in, and that is that uh, Brendan Denty, I believe. Is that it? 68, yeah. Looks like a timeout on the field by end, oh, the end of the first quarter. Wow, that went by pretty quick. They say time flies when you're having fun. Hey, that's always fun to me. Spending time with you, neighbor. By the way, I saw your mom walking the dog the other day. I waved hello. Oh, uh, you know, she was out last week, and, you know, I watched the dog, fed the dog, washed the dog. Oh, and boy. And you would think the minute my mother comes home, dog doesn't talk to me. So <laughs> yeah, we all know what that's like. That's cool. But so, best motto in life, be the person your dog thinks you are. Yeah, that's funny. That's true, though. Hey, uh, switching gears back to football, though, uh, your old alma mater, Woodbridge, they're, they're looking forward to a big year. New coach, Joe George, right? And yes. uh, they're down in Old Bridge tonight. Yes, opening up. Yeah, so there's a lot of excitement. I don't know what Colony is doing. Maybe we can find that out. And also, Rutgers opens up tonight, I think, against Howard. Yeah, 6 p.m. Yeah, they're playing around. Shy Stadium. A lot of anticipation for the Rutgers football season, too, going bowling last year and beating Miami. Yeah. Pinstripe Bowl. Right, right. That's always exciting. It, it, it didn't show the replay, so it's not showing. No. Has it been switching back and forth? Yeah, I mean, it's, we're seeing the game a lot. An incomplete pass. Oh, that hit the ground first? Yeah. Oh, that's a good effort by Lorenzen. And falls incomplete. Third down. Roach did a good job of extending that play, Absolutely. though. You know, he could have he could have took a sack for a loss, and he really stretched it out. A lot of quarterbacks get scared, but he kept his eyes down the field while he's rolling out to the left of the pocket. I'm looking over on the sideline, and Trotman is jogging up and down before the watchful eyes of the athletic trainer, and I believe the gentleman in the blue shirt is a doctor. So. That's to be determined whether we see him again. Mustangs coming back on the ball, and they really spread the field out with slot to both sides, twins on both sides, single setback, taking up almost the entire field. There it is. Nice little drag route to and the slot receiver. Yeah, number seven. That was uh, Emilio. Yeah. Uh-oh, uh-oh, we got some words going on. That's going to put backwards, depending on... I see the Mustangs putting their hand... I mean, the uh, Panthers are putting their hands up, so let's see who they call this on. Better not be one of those plays where they do on Sportsman like to both teams and nothing happens. 
I'll have to admit I had my head down looking at the paperwork and I didn't even see the... Uh... Yeah, I, I, I was with you. I just glanced up real quick when I, I heard all of the whistle commotion. But it looks like it is going against the Panthers. Whatever happened, happened. Against and that'll bring the ball back 15 yards. We can't see the replay in the booth, but as you see that on the replay, they made a good first down on that drag route, but they don't pick up any yards with the 15 yard penalty. They lose the yardage, but they have the first down because they picked it up on the last play. And they kind of pick up right where they left off yeah. with a new set of downs. Yeah, do over. And now the trainer's talking to Trotman. He seems to have all the right answers, so maybe we'll see him again. But in the meantime, I, I, I think, you know, uh, Roach is holding his own. Yes. He's, he's holding his own. And let me check real quick. He is, he's a senior, so, you know, he's got experience. Once again, the offense are spreading the field out, trying to create some lanes. And the refs blow the play back live. Two backs in the backfield, giving them Roach a little protection back there. Hand off. Short yardage, number 64 in on the tackle, Marquez for the Panthers. No gain on the play, second down, still. Cesar Marquez in on that tackle. Going into the game for the Stangs now, number seven, Emilio Ruiz. Ruiz coming out is number one, and that is Len Tobin for the Stangs. Coming out wide here again is Lorenzen, number 11. Number seven on the other side, wide for the Mustangs, and that is Emilio Ruiz. I hope they go back to the air. They were finding some good success there. Yeah, they're keeping the back back there for a little extra protection, but kind of a delayed handoff there. Not bad, picked up some yardage. Howell Jr. Good and blocking that, and vision. That was number, uh, that was number four, Hal Jr. Number five coming out now, Perez Quijano. Manny's coming out. That's a big fellow there, number five. Six foot, 225. That quarterback goes to the sideline after every play, Steph. He probably runs uh, two miles during the game. <laughs> he has no problem getting his 10,000 steps. Yeah, in no. Day. Oh, not like me. Today was a bad day for me. Wow, the Mustang is number nine. Big receiver here, Zachary Taylor on our side. He's a big dude. Here comes motion. Grant Lorenzen at the top of the screen. Looks like a delay of game, pe delay of game penalty. Ah, uh, that hurts after a nice run like that. A nice, uh, uh, that's tough. Sometimes uh, playing football, your biggest opponent can be yourselves. You know, the, after that drag route for the first round, yeah. we saw the 15-yard unsportsmanlike penalty. They've gained most of the yardage back, and then boom, back to third and 10 uh, with the delay of game. Yeah, you know, the motion and all of that has a purpose. It allows you to establish what type of defense they're playing, right. who's man-to-man, -man, who's locked on. But sometimes you don't get the timing down, right? That's what happens, so. But number nine, Zachary Taylor, I was saying, Steph, he's 6'1", 180 pounds. He's a wow. big glass of water. Absolutely. But it's tough in high school football. It's not like the NFL where there's clocks everywhere. A lot of times you have to gauge it by your yeah. internal clock. Yeah, yeah, no, that's very true. Good point. Successful snap. He's back. A little pass rush. He's going backwards, time. throws it downfield into the crowd, and it's broken up by a, a large group of, I only saw one, one green shirt in there. I, so you're saying it had a chance? It, I think it was intended for number one, actually. It looked like it might have been Lee Tobin that it was intended for, but the Panthers sniffed that out. Coming out of the game there, I see number uh, 52 for the Stangs. Dwayne McFarlane, I haven't been able to single him out yet. He's doing a nice job. And at 
uh, Jugra Zing, number 50 on the line. The workhorses out there, that offensive line and defensive line down in the trenches. Absolutely, the heart of soul of any football team. Lorenzen with a pretty nice kick. Both guys are doing a pretty darn good job. Whoa. And a friendly JFK roll. Wow, that's deep. That's deep, man. We'll see what the uh, Mustangs defense does. And, uh, number 10 going out into the game, Leo Sadassi hustling out onto defense. And again, I see number five out there, Manny Perez Kijano. Playing on the corner on this side. Number one is Lee Tobin. We've called his number out of cup. So Panthers are deep here, and we've got, uh, I can't even see the scoreboard. Where is the scoreboard? Good Lordy, 9.38 in the first half. Time moving by pretty quickly. Can you see the scoreboard from where you are, Stefan? No, no, just a wish and a prayer and a good lean a in. Good lean or minutes. lean back or, or listen to Miss Miss Katala. She'll tell us what's going on. Uh, she's been on the money helping us out a lot on the yardage and the penalties. And... Here's the first play. Not much for the Mustangs. It's hard to see down there. Not much for the Panthers because the Mustangs had a nice uh, defensive stand there. Looks like a gain of half a yard. Sometimes it's daunting coming out of your own end zone because you know going backwards, you get closer to that safety zone. There's always that nervous a fumble, a pick six, yeah, absolutely. something like that occurring. I think the leader of that last stuff was number five, and that was Perez Quijano, Manny. He's a big fella in the middle there. And number 33 also is a pretty dominant player so far, Dylan Driz. Some movement. The question is whether they were drawn off, but he's pointing to uh, the defense being offsides. Sometimes, and you'll take yardage any way you get it. Five more yards for the Panthers. Some breathing room. And it, it, you know, it's like you said, when that ball is down there, everybody is up in high intensity. The defense wants to pin them, the offense wants to get out, and you can get offsides, things like that, just by being anxious. A nice quick handoff. Nice play by the defense. Quickly stymied. Number 33. And number 33, I saw Dylan Driz in on that play too. And I, uh, another flag is thrown out. Oh, geez. You hate to see that. EJ Kaminsky went into the game, number 55. I think it's another unsportsmanlike under against a Mustang. Oh boy. So that would give the Panthers a 15 yard advantage and a first down. Get some right out of the hole. That's not what you wanted to do. You, you did a good job of getting them down there. Lorenzen had that beautiful punt and, and nice coverage by the Mustangs. And now we're in, now that we let them out of the hole there. Must have been something said it obviously didn't look like much activity after the play. Yeah. They're still evaluating um, Trotman, and he's looking pretty strong on the sideline. You could see his left ankle, they taped it up pretty tight, or his right ankle, excuse me. Oh, what a nice play there. Who was that? Number 10. That was uh, Leo Sedesi. What a heads up play to blast in the backfield that quick. Yeah, that, that's what you needed after a penalty like that. Niam Yus is in the game now, number eight, came back in. It's looking like this game is a battle of the old lines. The big hog mollies are going to determine who wins this one. <laughs> Absolutely. Aiden Roach, the quarterback, is uh, trying to get a little bit comfortable, a little bit more comfortable with the ball. Panthers also using that spread, taking advantage of the full field, although they do have two backs in the backfield. Drop back. To, Ooh. Nice throw. A nice tight spiral. A little over. That was geared towards uh, Brendan Bradshaw. It's probably the longest pass we've seen in the air this game, and it was a beautiful spiral. Yeah. Just he definitely a, has the arm talent. A little bit behind him. He had to reach back. You still think you got it? 
if I put you out there running a little drag route or a boast route? Yeah, if nobody's covering me. <laughs> yeah, I got it, all right. 4340? Oh, good Lord. In my dreams. 50 years ago in my dreams. <laughs> I think I can maybe give you six flat on a good night. <laughs> Perth Amboy with trips formation here to the right, single single back on the left, quarterback rolling out. out. Wow, wide open. A lot of green grass, number one for Perth Amboy. Oh, he, could, he could go all the way, and he does. Touchdown Panthers. No flag. And looks like Brandon Bradshaw, yep. the senior wide receiver. Had a wide open hitch in the middle of the field and took it all the way to the house for the Panthers. Extra point. Okay, here we go for the extra point now. That was a breakaway play. Wow, we just went uh, we went online and asked the crew if they could uh, do a, a replay on that, which they will after the extra point is attempted. Uh, unfortunately, Stefan and I will not be able to see it. You guys are going to have to view it for yourself. And that's okay. But after that beautiful spiral on the incomplete pass, the coach said, I think I'm going to put the ball in the hands of my quarterback. And obviously, he made the right decision. Yeah, he sure did. That was a beautiful catch right there, pass and catch. It was perfect. Low snap, and it looks like it might have been deflected. And that'll leave us at a 6-0 score with the Panthers in the lead. I think Isaiah Walker, number three, might might have had a hand on that or at least created a little hurry up there. So I think uh, our viewers are watching the replay right now. Okay, there's here comes the replay. Let us know how it is. All right, and there you are, break away. And he, and there, there it is, and there's the touchdown. All right, and it looks like uh, number two, the Kennedy quarterback, Trotman, Richie Trotman, is throwing the ball with, with his backup, number 13, um, Aiden Roach. So it's good to see both of those quarterbacks working. We have a little pause on the field. It's a beautiful day for football today. You couldn't pay for better weather. Yeah, you could. yeah, it's nice. There's a nice breeze blowing. You can't beat it. Um, when I asked Coach Henderson uh, some things that he could share with us, he's uh -huh. uh, Manny Perez Quijano, uh, number five, Dylan Driz, Alejandro Montavo, who's number 24, Aiden Roach, number 13, are all in the varsity lineup for wrestling. They're all wrestlers, oh, wow. too. So there's a lot of, you know, a lot of uh, multi-sport athletes on the field. I'm sure that's true for Perth Amboy. When I asked um, Perth Amboy coach William Clark, he he really emphasized that this group worked very hard in the off season uh, and they were expecting them to have better stamina and physical conditioning because they, they, you know, it's a long season, you know Absolutely. yourself, right? I mean, it's physical, it's long. And it's a little bit of time setting up for this kickoff. Yep, Lorenzen's back there. And who's that other number closest to us? I can't, number four. Number four. Powell Jr., right, Fahim? Fahim? Two playmakers we've seen on the offense. Yep. Kicking off for the Panthers is number 24, Chris Lopez Barrera. Not a bad kick. Back to the 15, and Lorenzen, Lorenzen taking it. Ball. Cuts it back inside and caught by number 12 on per Thamboy. Lorenzen yep. on the return. By Lorenzen all the way out to the... 44 yard line, nice job. Very nice job by Lorenzen on that play. Castano jumping on Lorenzen, possibly saved the touchdown. Yeah. Lorenzen was definitely getting the train moving on that play. He saw something, he saw a hole in the end zone. It was caught up. He is explosive, there's no question about it. He really can make things happen. He's a playmaker. And uh, Lorenzen, speaking of Lorenzen, is on the short side of the field. Mustangs get the ball. Bounces it out to the right side. An athletic spin move. Picked up a few marks on the move alone. 
And probably is second and five. Yep. And Trot Trotman's back in the game as yep. we see. Absolutely. Glad to see him back. Yes, indeed. It's always good. Number one going into the game now, um, Tobin, Lee Tobin for the Mustangs. Split out wide on the other side of the field is Zachary Taylor, 6'1", 180 pounds. As I mentioned, they've got trips on that side. One split end on this side and a single quick screen. Nice little bubble screen. Oh. The jersey pull helped with the tackle, saving yeah. the first down. Looks like a third and three. And, and we're seeing with Trotman a lot of uh, quick run to get him back in the game, and it looks like he's back in full control of the offense. Perth Amboy Panthers are coming over, and they got a box of goodies. Maybe they'll be coming up to see us. I hope so. I haven't eaten all day, sadly, so this would yeah. be a, a truly a treat. And a flag was thrown on the far oh, side of the field. Oh. Wow, what a run. What a run. And the flag was thrown at the start of the snap, so I'm hoping it's an offsides call and Kennedy keeps the gain on the play. Oh, that hurts. That hurts. What a shame. Fahim Howe gave it, a, gave it his all. What a play. He dragged some people with him on Absolutely. that one. Absolutely. At least a 40-yard gain that uh, the refs are discussing, and we'll see what the penalty is. And as we find out the details on this penalty, looks like the Mustangs are going back. For Thamboy Cheer Squad, which is an awful big, big in numbers, is uh, just did a nice little performance in front of the home crowd. 40-yard gain turned into a five-yard loss. Oh, gosh, that hurts. And here's the replay for you to see, folks. Let us know how it is because we can't see it. Hopefully it, it looks just as good as the first time on the field. Yep. Drop in uh, and. Okay, here we are with the Panthers. I mean, the Barons in third in, uh, what, maybe about eight? Looks Can't. about that. And we've yet to see Trotman throw it deep, so this might be his opportunity here. Offsides on the Panthers. Encroachment, huh? Right. Five yards for a uh, that'll help a little bit. Wonder if that Coach Henderson will change his approach on this play now that the yardage is a little shorter. Huh? Same formation, telling them to keep the same play. Quick pass, caught, and it's a first down. Nice job there by uh, Tobin, Lee Tobin. He really had his, his uh, sense of awareness as to where he was, because he caught that ball right at there and went right down, didn't Kept take any secure. chances. Much needed first down for the Mustangs, keeping the drive momentum. Yeah. Yeah, they need to come through here now because the Mustangs picked up a little, I mean, the Panthers picked up a little excitement with that score. Our Mustangs need to do a little bit of the same. Four minutes and change left in the quarter. With all the running plays, the clock does keep on running. So the game is going quick. Straight up the middle. Good second effort there. I think that, that was Hal Jr., I believe. Is that number four? Looks about a four-yard gain from up here. Number 11 for Perth Amboy was in on that tackle, and that was uh, Ryan Escato. Escato in on the stop for Perth Amboy. The clock's still ticking. Kennedy offense clearly controlling the tempo of the game at the moment. Second down in about eight. Mustangs in that spread. Single setback. Another pass. Oh, intercepted. For Tamboy's number 15. Trotman was glued in the pocket and had a hand in his face as he released it and yeah. obviously impact his view of downfield. 
That, that hurts. Emmanuel Marino for the Panthers on that interception, just kind of covering the middle of that field. He was watching the quarterback's eyes. I think he was giving it away because it seemed like it was passed to him. Absolutely. Panthers get the ball back. Three minutes and some change left in the second quarter. Uh, and left plenty of time to make something happen. All right, here we go. We'll see how the Mustangs defense responds. Looks like number 55 is trying to get off the field. Just in time. Quick screen. Sniffed out. Nice job. Number, Number zero, zero. Yeah. Jameer Campbell. Very nice job. Stopped out the play from the beginning. Good instincts on that. Yeah, fabulous. You'll... Half a second earlier, you might have had a pick six. Yeah. Boy, that was a nice shoestring tackle, as they say, though, right? I mean, he just... Absolutely. And good on number 55, that Mustang running off the field. That could have been another five-yard penalty yeah. if he didn't make it off in time. Pretty dramatic slide just to get <laughs> off there, too. Shows you that off-season conditioning pays off. Yeah. I can say that now that I don't have to run laps. <laughs> We have second in a long way now for the Panthers. They're probably going to throw the ball. There's a drag across the field. Oh, number 13. Aiden Roach almost picked that one off. We almost exchanged sides again. And this receiver wasn't where he thought his receiver was. No, absolutely not. But a beautiful pocket on that play. Good job by the old line up for the Panthers. Yeah, he wasn't rushed for sure. I think the intended target was uh, number 13, and that was Adrian Maji for the uh, Panthers. It's third and long, two minutes to go in the second quarter. Panthers are eager to capitalize. The JFK defense remaining stout on this drive. And they could, if a stop here, have another opportunity on offense with two minutes and change to go. A lot of passing. Another beautiful ball by the quarterback, but his receiver uh, just not there. Good defense by Kennedy. I see number uh, Kennedy's number six was in there, Jaden Franz, and what's the other number there? I can't tell. Is that eight? Looks like eight down there on the line. Yep. Naeem Muse was in on that pressure in the quarterback. Out of the game for the Stangs right now is number 12, Gabe Rodriguez. And also coming out now is number 10. Leo. And here's the quarterback punting. So a nice defensive stand so far by the Mustangs on that series. Absolutely. And I don't know if that was a, a, a muff snap. It would almost hit one of the uh, personal protectors for the punters. But uh, number seven was eager to catch it and got the punt off. Emilio Ruiz, yeah, he did a nice job, Steph, because he, he stumbled a little bit, but then gained another five yards. So really some very nice uh, very nice uh, display of running skills there. Special teams, good or bad, can definitely turn the pace of a game. So, Oh, absolutely. Uh, minute and 59 seconds to go. No two-minute warning in high school football. They just introduced it in college football this season. Oh, yeah. And it has fans mixed, uh, saying it's a little bit too much like the NFL. Yeah, yeah. Well, college football starting to get a little bit like the NFL, right? <laughs> Uh, uh, do we have NIL deals? Yeah. <laughs> you and I. <laughs> Goodness gracious. You, you got to keep a scorecard. Who's playing for what team, right? Wow. He just brought him down. Let's get that number. Number 12. Yeah. Uh, Albin Castano. Albin Castano did a nice job. That was a loss, right? It had to be. Chased him down, made contact, and held him down till help arrived. Yep, and kept him inbound, so the clock is running. We're under two minutes. We're under a minute and a half now. In the half. Five, 
All right, the Mustangs getting set. They don't seem to be in any rush motion by number 11. And there is a, I don't see a flag. Was there a timeout? A false start, they're saying, against the Mustangs. Oh, really? Gosh, I didn't even see. Oh, yes, there's a flag on the other end. Oh, boy. Yeah, the sun's going down here, so and the lights are turning on, so easy to miss that flag. Yeah. You know, you got to be real careful here. You can't get careless, boy, because that, that defense is hungry right now. And the offensive penalty doesn't stop the clock, so the clock is still running, going under a minute now. And it looks like a Kennedy timeout taken by the coach. Yeah. Second down. Oh, by Perthamboy, excuse me. Yeah, I think Perthamboy wants to try to see if they can get another shot, you know, a long shot at a touchdown here. Well, it's not a long shot, actually. Not from here, anyway. 58 seconds, we're under a minute. You know, the quarterback for Perth Amboy, that, that one offensive play that they connected on, it looked brilliant. But, really good. Uh, you know, both teams have shown some flashes on offense that they are, they're capable. Yeah, they had one terrible callback uh, on an offside play. That was such a shame. Uh, Lorenzen did a great job on, on some uh, receptions here. and uh, But, yeah, I think what we're seeing is the week one blues shaking the rust off and getting the jitters out. And hopefully in the second half we'll see a lot more action from both of the offenses. Yeah, yep. They can settle down and make their adjustments at halftime. Trotman airs this one out to Lorenzen and... Wow. There was a little body contact there between a, a Lorenzen and uh, number 18, Andy Garcia. And they both looked up and played the ball, so no pass interference on yeah. either side. Garcia, if he turned a little earlier, could have picked that off. I Look, think it hit yeah. him in the arm. When he watches film uh, tomorrow and Monday, he'll be kicking himself on that play. Oh, yeah. Or the coach will be. Somebody will be. 54 seconds to go. Mustangs are real spread out. And he, oh, he didn't get out of bounds, though. No, clock is still going. Emilio Ruiz. And that is... Clock is still ticking, right? Looks like a, a fourth and two. Clock is back on. Oh, now we got a whistle. Some... We're thinking, boy, calling a timeout. I guess they're using their timeouts. Yeah, I think they believe that's their second timeout of the half trying to preserve some time for their offense to at least uh, make something happen down the field. The old Hail Mary. Their PAT earlier was blocked after the touchdown, so I don't know their willingness to go down to it's probably yeah. a touchdown or nothing right, right. before the end of the uh, first half. The Mustang cheerleaders getting ready for their halftime performances. The coaches are up here next to us. That's always very exciting. They look great, those uh, shiny uh, pom-poms. They're really cool. All right, here we go. Plays resuming out here. The Mustangs in fourth and one. And they're still in a split, spreading out the offense, looking for a lane here. Could be a play, could be a punt, and it's a play by oh, Lorenzen. It, it was Lorenzen, direct snap. And no, he, he doesn't, doesn't get, get it. it. No, he might have used up a lot of time, though. 28 seconds left. So the Panthers are going to have a shot with that turnover on down. Not bad field position at all. No. And you'll do that much coveted two minute drill that you practice usually at the end of practice. Oh, yeah. I think Lorenzen's a little upset with himself. He, he must have saw something that he thought he could have got that first down. He was just shy of it. Yeah. I mean, it was a great effort. The way they were lined up, I don't know if he had the option, if he liked what he saw to run it, or if he didn't step back and punt it, uh, but um, obviously chose to ran it, run it. Yeah. You know, from when you're in that punt position, for goodness gracious, you're eight yards back Correct. from the line of scrimmage. So you got to run eight yards to get to the line of scrimmage, But and he almost got it. So that was a great effort by him. Let's see how the... the uh, the defense holds up here. 
We've got uh, two receivers on this side, two receivers on the other side. Your jacket just fell. Oh, and he's, uh, he's sacked. He's down. Nice job. The Mustangs defense remaining stout. Their second sack of the night. I saw Jaden Jaden France in there, number six, did a nice job. He was the first guy in. And that should keep the clock moving. We're under 10 seconds. So I don't know if the Panthers are going to get a uh, an opportunity to run a play here. And it looks like they let the clock expire. And there you have it, folks. So it's sorry about that. So it's halftime with the Panthers up by six. They missed an extra point. Um, we've got the per the uh, Mustang cheerleaders will be performing. Uh, it's a it's a, you know a great. Great half so far. We could have got a little bit more excitement from the Stangs, but Stefan Lally, Greg Ficara, we're going to take a little break here at halftime, and we'll be back for the third quarter. Stay tuned, everybody. Have a good one. Hey, welcome everybody. Stefan Lally and Greg Ficara here, uh, your broadcasters for the evening. We have the visiting Perth Amboy Panthers against the Mustangs with the Panthers up 6-0. They missed an extra point. A little bit over a minute before the start of the game. It's been a pretty even contest. Steph, penalties, big part of the game so far, though. Yeah, that's been the makeup for the uh, Mustangs. You know, they had a great 40-yard run uh, early in the second quarter, and it was called back on, uh, I believe it was a uh, uh, an offside. Yeah. And uh, and, they, and it's held them from the uh, scoring on the scoreboard. And the Panthers took advantage of the one shot they had in the passing game. But it's been a, a defensive stalemate on both sides of the, the ball. Absolutely. Uh, Coach Cantala up here in the, in the press box in the announcer's booth uh, just turned on the lights. It's like a miracle. I can actually see the uh, rosters. Anyway, in outside news, we are aware that uh, last we checked, Rutgers University was beating Howard. What did you say, Steph? 14 nothing. 14 nothing, and the score is still the same. So that's very exciting for the Scarlet Knights and, and also for Howard coming up and playing the Big Ten Rutgers football. We've got a uh, you know fairly nice crowd here. It's just about we're approaching a holiday weekend. It's a Thursday night. Um, got a nice crowd on the home side here, and, and not bad for Perth Amboy. You can see them stretching across the field, and right now we've got a little view of what's going on in the stands here. So it's right around twilight, 
feels like the end of the summer, doesn't it, Steph? Absolutely. I, I am aware that uh, our Woodbridge Barons are over at Old Bridge. I don't know if uh, I'm not too good on my phone what the status of that is. Um, I was able to pull up the live stream here, and it looks like it's still the first quarter, and it's tied at zero. Okay, so they started a little, a little later then. And then I don't know if Colonia is playing... Uh, if Colonia is playing today or tomorrow either, but we're, we're beginning uh, the the second half again with, with uh, Perth Amboy up 6 nothing, and the Mustangs are preparing to kick off. Uh, by the way, folks, it, this is a little late in the game, but if, you, you, if you're watching it, you already know this, that we are live on Woodbridge Facebook and also live on uh, Woodbridge Township uh, YouTube. So uh, hopefully those of you watching... Um, we're making some sense to you. Mustangs are lined up to kick off, and the Panthers are getting organized to receive as we start the third quarter here at John F. Kennedy Memorial Stadium in Island. And away we go. Low kick. Scooped up. Cuts it to the right. Oh, nice tackle. Ronald Estevez for the Panthers returning. And that was... Tackle by number 12, Alex Futterter. Nice play. Looks like Futterter's a, uh, a special teams player. He's getting a lot of congratulations on the way off, on the, on the way off the field. Nice job there. And uh, before the end of the half, we were starting to see Levon Baltzar, the quarterback for uh, the Panthers, start to air it out a little bit. Like to see that continue. Yep. The young man certainly has an arm. This will be a. a Big series for both teams. It's going to set the tone, I think, for the for the second half here. And as the lights are setting on the field, it looks like a little Ohio State Eastern Michigan action. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. What do we got? We're starting out the second half. What's that? Is there a clock issue? Ah, uh, the T was left on the field. Ah, the old T. All right. There we go. Good eye by the referee. Yeah. Hate for someone to trip on that. Oh, terrible. That would be not good. Start right off with a pass, but he decides to keep it. Drags a couple of Mustangs with him and picks up at least five yards. The quarterback did. 6'4", 215 pounds. He could fall forward and pick up five yards. Absolutely. That's a... A good design play. It looked like he had the bubble on the left, and he declined to take that and did a little quarterback option right up the middle. Yeah. Just saw a, uh, a look of the Perth Amboy sideline, and their uh, special teams coordinator, Mike Manfrey, is a former Mustang. Oh. He's actually in the Woodbridge Township Athletic Hall of Fame. He was a professional baseball player. I think he made it to AAA. I've, always I've been learning that there's always a Woodbridge connection. Yes, indeed. Nice run there. By I, Ricardo Henriquez, lowered his shoulders. Yep, and Lee Tobin uh, made the contact, number one. They did get a first down. Absolutely. You saw him cover up that ball and just, you know, run straight ahead. He, you know, we all, we all know as football players, that's what they tell you to do, protect the ball. That was an excellent tackle by uh, Lee Tobin there, number one for the Stangs. Trips to the right. Yep, they were very spread out again. We're seeing both teams really spreading the field out, trying to create some lanes either for passing or running. And we're rolling right here. Short pass, and whoa, that was knocked right out of him. Met immediately by number seven, Emilio Ruiz. Nice hit. That was a really well-played defense there. Not a badly designed play either. No, not at all. He was open. I didn't think he expected to get hit. But a well-timed hit not only for the contact, but uh, dislodged the ball, making it an incomplete pass. Absolutely. When plays like that matter, right? You save yourself five yards and second down. Absolutely. Slow that. momentum for the Panthers. And, you know, that was, you know, new age football with all the safety, safety precautions. He came in with his shoulder, didn't lower his head. Absolutely. It was just a good hard hit, but a safe one. So that's what you like to see. You could still hit hard in football. I like what they've done with the safety. Keep your head up. And as you were saying, it's a good, hard, clean hit. Yep. We got trips all the way on the far side by the Panthers, indicating they might throw the ball. Third down. Yep, we have a quick screen. Some yardage, but picked up. 
Mustangs are showing some life here on defense. Uh, I saw number 10 in there, uh, Leo Sedesi. And it looks and, like a third and nine and three quarters. Yep. And also in on that last play, which was a good one, Manny perez Giano uh, was big on that play. He came in and sniffed that thing out. That's a big fellow there, Manny. I, you know, he lives across the street from me, and see him wearing his tank top is, uh, he lives by us, by the does way, he? Manny does. Yeah, yeah. Oh. He, I think they, uh, he started high school here, and they moved there, so he's able to finish through. Good. Panthers all spread out again, taking advantage of widening the field, creating some lanes. We have a third down and about 10. And there's a whistle and a flag. Too much time. Looks and like that'll push the Panthers back a little delay bit. A delay a game. We'll make it third down and 15. More favorable position for the defense. And the Mustang defense has done a great job keeping, giving the, op the, the offense a, a chance to stay in the game. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Six, you know, six points. To, oh, who are they going to call that on? Did their linebacker cross the line of scrimmage first? But we definitely know that the offense moved. Going to come together and discuss it. It looks like it's going to go against Kennedy. Yeah, yeah. See or, the and offsides. And offsides. So we come back to the 39-yard line, third down, and 10 yards to go. Yeah, you got to, that's where you really got to eliminate those things. You see that early in the season, it's almost somewhat forgivable, but you don't want to give the team yardage for nothing. Absolutely. Sometimes you get a little antsy and the hard count gets you. Wow, nice play there. Extends it. Almost intercepted by a Kennedy player, but dropped. Boy, nice job of stringing out that quarterback. And the quarterback for Perth Amboy did a nice job of staying on his feet. I believe it was Lee Tobin for on the defense for Kennedy on that play. Yep, and also I saw in there number uh, 33 looking for his number, and that was Dylan Driz. Don't in. think you could have played that any better on defense? No. They, you know, as coaches, we always say string it out, string it out, string it out, and then all of a sudden the sideline becomes another player. Absolutely. Louise, number 7, and Lorenzen, number 11, keep for the Mustangs. So the quarterback is uh, back to... Punt. Last time they punted it, the snap went off the side of his personal protector. Yeah. Hopefully we get a clean snap here. Le'Veon back there. He's, he's a presence boy. He's a big fellow. Good snap. Fair catch called. Nice job. Nice job by Lorenz in there. That's not an easy thing to do, boy. Once you wave that hand, it's all on you, right? Right. You, you just say, I'm going to catch this. We're going to stay right here and I think that was a great move by Grant. And we'll see the Mustangs really, really uh, shine there on defense. Let's see if they can carry it over to offense. Yeah, you were mentioning before in our halftime conversation that the Mustangs have a good opening day crowd here yeah. prior to Labor Day weekend. Yeah, yeah. The, our our uh, crew did a nice job of panning, um, but yeah, it's a nice crowd here. And it is a Thursday, you know, it, it, so it's not easy, and it's the start of a long weekend. Very exciting, though, just very exciting, the start of football. Straight handoff right up the Ooh. middle for extra yards, and he's still going with the first down. That was nothing fancy. Right up the middle, that was uh, Hal Jr., right? Fahim? Fahim picking up where he left off in the first oh, half. Oh, and we've got a flag. <laughs> what? What happened? Oh, they're throwing it on the coach. He was out too far. He must have been warned. He must, he, he must have been warned. So now you've got that. And uh, let's see, what is it, five yards it went back? I think it might have just been a sideline warning. I don't think they took any uh, yardage oh, okay. away. Okay, okay, good, good. All right, let's take a look at this. We're going to have a replay. And you'll see it's just straight up the middle, a little delayed handoff. Up to the 45 and it, it got him all the way into the deep part of the secondary, but I guess there, that was just a warning, hopefully. You're right, Stefan. Thank you for clarifying that. A little play action. Uh, oh. Pass a little high and slips out the hands of Perez Quijano. Yeah, he's, he, he, he floated that a little bit. It didn't have the zip, I think, that they, they were hoping for. Looked like we had a player down, but he popped right back up, number seven. Emilio Ruiz. The Trotman was kind of limping off the field here to come talk to the coach, too. 
Second down, still 10. Lee Tobin into the game. Number one in, and number seven is coming out. He's the player that seems to be limping in her checking a little bit. Um, and that's uh, Emilio Ruiz. And then we saw quarterback limping a little bit coming off. I think he's just tender. Yeah, sometimes half times can work against you when the adrenaline wears off and you start to feel the pain a little bit. Yep. Second down and 10. And it looks like Motion, a false start. Yeah. Oh, boy. Against Kennedy, another five yards back. Uh, so they're going backwards now. That nice play. They, they come out of the box with a nice first play. Second down and 15 from the 40. Little fine breeze blowing in the stadium. I would just tell coach, hey coach, it was the breeze that pushed me back. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They're definitely throwing into the wind. You can see the way the flags are. The flag's coming straight against the Mustangs right now. Lorenzen going out wide. Pass to Lorenzen, who comes up with it, but they're on him right away. I think he got back to the original line of scrimmage. Nice job, and a tackle by uh, number one, Brandon uh, Brescher, senior for the Panthers, sniffed it out, but still, we I think they got back to the original line of scrimmage. Nice catch by uh, Grant. I was just going to say, man, I, I think you got to get the ball in his hands. He's a playmaker. Absolutely. Lorenzen just makes things happen. I know early in the game they tried some jet sweeps and gadget plays like that and they seemed to stray away from it, but you're absolutely right. You need to get the ball in the hands of your playmaker. And he's wide on the other side. At the top of the screen. Yep, and they just slip somebody in the slot. Trotman's trying to organize his offense and it looks like a Kennedy timeout. Ah, that's a timeout that they're using just to get organized. That's a shame. You don't want to waste that, but... Well, you know what? While we have a timeout here, let me take a uh, minute to highlight the great production team here uh, at Woodbridge 35. You got Emil Brandolfi and Alex Brandolfi, tag team there. Clint Higgins, Adam Chinoy, and my man Ron Wyatt, who was with me out on the field to open things up. Graphic is the lovely Samantha Roth Green, audio Bruno Mars. The technical director is the good guy, Joe Fernandez, and the lovely Gina Forbes is the director. And we are so fortunate to have a production team as professional as that group of people I just mentioned. And if you ever have a chance to see something cool, you got to see the new production facility, the mobile facility that's here in, in Isla, New Jersey. It's awesome. And uh, it's just incredible what, what these folks do for our town in particular high school sports, it's amazing. So here we go. Mustangs with the ball, snap, fake handoff, and a whistle and a flag again. And it looks like uh, encroachment on the Panthers. That's a good thing. The Mustangs will pick up uh, five yards. We'll move the ball to the 50 yard line. For those who aren't able to uh, switch between games, it looks like the, uh, the Old Bridge has scored against Woodbridge in their game. Number five for the Stangs, Perez Keanu is back in the game. Look at look at their quarterback when he goes in and out, uh, Trotman the third, Stefan. It looks to me and the folks at home like he's got a little, he's walk, jogging a little tender. Straight handoff, but he pushes it outside. Nothing there. Panthers stiff, flip that out. It's like a three-yard loss in the game. And yeah. the house on the ground grabbing his ankle. Going to take an injury timeout here. Oh, boy. Don't want to see that. Mustang trainer heading out onto the field. Did you catch the number who it is? I no. can't see. And he's staying down. He's not getting up. Any word on Colonia? Is Colonia playing anywhere today? They are. It says they are at Sayreville, oh, 7 there's p.m. A... Oh, okay. Uh, it just looks like all the Sayreville Twitter pages are a little old, so I can't see what the score is for the game. Wow, two big games for our other teams, right? I mean, Woodbridge at Old Bridge and, and Colonia at Sayreville. My goodness, that's no 
we're not easing into the season no, there. No, we're starting off with the heavy hitters. Yeah. Across the township. Uh, but, of course, wishing Powell, hoping he's okay on the field. Right. Absolutely. And, again, you know, getting back to the production team, you can't see it, but the, the cameras that are on the field getting every angle for high school athletics, and he's up, number four, that we're very excited for Hal Jr. to be coming out on his, under his own power. The ability to, to watch replays and to be able to, you know, look at them and comment on them, and it's just so, it's so extremely professional. And, and I, I would challenge, you know, you look at any other town, and I'm not putting any towns down, but this is something that, uh, you know, Woodbridge Township does very well, and it's, it's, it's so nice to be able to promote our student athletes, you know. Absolutely. Second to none on Woodbridge TV, and it's a product of the testament to you and the council and the mayor for the investment they've put in to make sure we have the resources to have such a nice quality product. Second in about nine, and, oh, that's fourth. I can't see. Good punt. And it looks like the Panthers will field it. Yeah, that might have been ill-advised, but he's lucky he got away with it. Looks like a three-yard gain on the return for number nine, Ronald Estevez. Seven minutes to go in the third quarter, and the score remains 6 nothing in favor of the Perth Amboy Panthers. The Panthers' offense has had quite the breather since they were last on the field. And remember when we had the, when when the Mustangs' defense was on, it was very impressive. They were really right. swarming the ball, and uh, let's see if that if that continues here because they got uh, Perth Amboy pretty much pinned in down there. 25-yard line. Looks like they're doing a hard count, trying to catch them off sides again. Doesn't fool them. Straight handoff. He's fighting to get to the edge. And he does. Looks like a nice four-yard gain. Hard deserved. Yeah, yeah. He really worked hard for that. Ricardo Enriquez for the Panthers on that run. It looked like he was going to be thrown for a loss, and then he yet he picked up some yardage on that. Say the play's not over until the whistle blows, and that's a testament to that. He kept on pushing and found positive yardage. Le'Veon Baltazar in charge of the Perth Amboy offense. Gives him the play, breaks the huddle, and here we go. We've got a tight trip formation on the left and one wide out on the far end of the field and a single set. Snap, fakes the handoff and keeps it and picks up, I believe, a first down. Looks like he certainly got it and then some. Good read option. Yeah, really, he put the ball in and then he took it back out. So Simple concept, but all about timing between the quarterback and running back. A lot can go wrong at this level when you run it. Sure. And that involves a lot of cerebral uh, consideration, right? You got to keep your eyes down the field. And a lot of times on that fake exchange, it's a disaster. But that was run very smoothly. Both quarterbacks going to each of their sidelines to get the plays. That's a lot of extra yards on them. I imagine someday radials will end up in their helmets. I think this is the first year in college football. Again, another rule change that they allow radios in quarterbacks' helmets. What's going on now? Timeout, Perth Amboy. Coach Clark, I see coming out on the field. Coach Clark uh, played football in Perth Amboy, the head coach, uh, William Clark, nicknamed Scooter. And I believe he played at Virginia. He was an excellent wow. player, very good player, yeah. Was he a player in your time as AD there? Yeah, oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. He was an assistant coach while I was there. Just a, He's a fine gentleman. I mean, he, he's a gentleman. You know, sometimes to me... Uh, you know, that's that's as important as your knowledge of, of being a coach. He, he expects the kids to behave, and that's the way he was. Quiet, kind of quiet, unassuming. Sean Atkins is an assistant coach. He played. Uh, he was a, a wrecking ball running back. Then he went out to Kane and played. As I mentioned to you, uh, Mike Manfrey uh, certainly played here for, for Kennedy, but um, you know, a lot of a lot of Middlesex County coaches out there when Absolutely. you look at the staffs and stuff. and. Greg Fakara showing off his Panthers connections. <laughs> Mike Tita, I hired Mike as a gym teacher. He's out there. He's a uh, Mike Tita is a South River guy. 
And here go the here go the Panthers. It's going deep. Whoa! Oh! Holy mackerel! And to Brandon Bradshaw, touchdown Panthers. Wow, we gonna have to check a replay on that, hopefully. I saw Lavon's arm go back, back, and back, and 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 he did he have a cannon? He unloaded on that one. And uh Bradshaw had it by the fingertips. The ball almost out outran him. Wow. But yeah. he was able to bring it in. Boy, he was more than open. He was wide open. And we'll see that. Uh, we'll hopefully see that replay after the extra point attempt. Panthers now up 12 0 as we're getting ready for the extra point. Somebody saw something there because he he couldn't have been any more open. He was open by about five, six yards. And the ball was very well thrown. Nice Absolutely. Nice Can't get a tighter spiral. spiral. Yeah. Just under five and a half on that touchdown. After this game, Beldazar might be a player to watch across the county. Yeah. And that extra point is good by number 24, Chris. Chris Lopez Barrera. Okay, folks, here's the replay of that touchdown. Watch this. You don't see the ball now. Look at that. Yeah, maybe about five yards. Fingertip catch, Stefan, as you pointed out. He managed to keep his balance, stay in bounds, and then it was a walk in the park after that, right? Yeah, it looked like a, a quick replay, but it looked like a man coverage. I didn't see a safety over the top. No, nobody went over on that side. But, but again, great job by the uh, production team on capturing that so we can see it. Absolutely. What an angle. Yep. What a ball. What a catch. Wide open. So now we've got a 13-point, two-score lead here. And uh, the Kennedy Mustangs, they got to show something here. They got to, they gotta, you know, do something on offense to get back in this game because those big type of plays could be real momentum changers in a game, especially when it's so close and back and forth. I think they caught Kennedy a little bit on their heels there. Um, but that quarterback for Perth Amboy is, is very impressive back there. He's got a lot of confidence and uh, a lot of poise in the pocket. Yeah, not, yeah. Not easily startled. Nope, he's not running for the hills or is anything. Is he a first year starter? I didn't watch a lot of Perth Amboy football last year. Yeah, I, 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 let's see. I don't know. Well, I'm looking at Kennedy. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. He is a senior, so you got to think he's got some experience. Although, who knows? Maybe he came from the transfer portal. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, that'd be pretty easy Pretty easy in the portal. Uh, spicy 10 nuggets and uh, uh, medium fry. <laughs> transfer to any school of your liking, folks. Six. Mustangs will start. Oh, he answered his phone. He answered his phone. Jaden France did a nice job of recovering that. That kick was bouncing around for a while, and he got it. The Mustangs have pretty good field position. It looks like they're on about the 34-yard line. Let's see what how they react here. Um, and there's a lot of time left in the game, but for the Mustangs, they must be feeling the crunch to get make something happen. Yeah. To get down the field, I know penalties has been uh, stymieing the offense every possession. Looks like uh, Grant Lorenzen is on the far end. He's usually on his own. They're trying to. I saw him. Straight up the middle. Good job of keeping his feet. And got some good yardage there, boy. Yeah, and as we were talking about Lorenzen, how Junior makes that nice run and said, don't forget about me. I'm still on yeah. the field. And he was injured, right? A few a few plays ago, he, he came up, got up slow. But, boy, he looked quick on that one. Nothing like a little tape. All right, we're going to take a look. Uh, production team's ready to show us. Watch this. Nothing fancy. Up the middle, breaks that first tackle, breaks this tackle. And look at him. Keeps the legs moving. Yeah, absolutely. Beat, beats out those arm tackles. Good protection. And we're back live now. Trotman back goes going deep. deep. He had him. He just, what? what's going on over here? That can't be good. And it just didn't look like uh, Lorenzen didn't just get a good jump off the line of scrimmage when running the route. Little off keel. But Kennedy willing to put the ball in the air, make something happen, put it in the hands of one of their best players.
Mustangs have the field spread again. Whoa, dear. Uh oh, fumble. And we were just talking about the read option, how on timing it, it, it makes or kills the play. And it looked like the quarterback wanted to hand it to the running back. The running back thought it was a keeper, and uh, nobody ended up with the ball. And they both fall on it to keep it a Mustang football. Third down and 12, boy. Puts you in a tough position. Have to imagine, uh, if you're the coach, no matter what happens here, you maybe try to go for it on fourth down. Panthers coming with four down linemen. Pass? Oh, oh. he comes from the blind side. That was number seven for Perth Amboy, Le'Veon Balbazar. That's the quarterback. quarterback. Yeah. Quarterback saying hello to his opponent? Yeah. Boy, you know, it, when he when they were lined up on the line of scrimmage, it almost looked like he was lined up over the line, of, uh, you know, over the ball. But obviously the officials were right there, so they would have called it. But. But a good jump, a good clean hit on the quarterback, and a promising drive by the Mustangs, stymied by a tough Panthers defense. Yep, absolutely. A little breeze picking up here in the press box. By the way, Stefan, nice catch on that flying piece of paper there. I always tried to tell Coach I had soft hands, but it fell on deaf ears, sadly. <laughs> All right. Fair catch call. Panther boy sidelines is saying you had room, you should have went, you should have went, but, uh, you know, you can't second guess. They got the ball. Number 54, Justin Calderon on the line, six foot, 190 pounds, came off, and he looked like he was hobbling a little bit there. And we are at three minutes and 11 seconds left in the third period. Temperature's a little uh, cooler. My Apple Watch says 73. It feels like a beautiful evening. It's a good fire pit weather. Yeah, yeah, great football weather too. Scrappy run here. Breaks through arm tackles for a positive gain. I think the uh, the Panthers are feeling it a little bit. You see a little uh, little kick in their step and. Uh, I know earlier in the game, some words uh, were exchanged between both teams on the field when unsportsman likes were being called. And hopefully uh, the sportsmanship stays up throughout the rest of the game. Number 77 for the Mustangs, Melvin Tejada, senior, 5'10", 255 in the game on the defensive line. They're bringing in the B. Oh, oh, we got a fumble, but he recovers himself. That thing went forward. They're lucky. Yeah, it looks like he, when he handed it off, it bounced right off his chest plate. Sometimes tough with the height difference. You know, the quarterback's 6'4", your running back's five foot and change, and what you think is your normal height <laughs> is not normal for everybody else. Yeah. I think the handoff is just a little bit too high. 54, uh, Calderon back in, so uh, Tejado's play there was short-lived, in and out. Straight drop back, and now he runs to the side, unleashes one, and it's caught. Nice catch. Um, and, and kudos to the receiver. It was a hard fall on the way down, and he held on to the football. Yep, Brandon Brashier for, uh, for the Panthers. Did a nice job of catching that. Brandon is a senior. But it looks like the pass on the field was ruled incomplete. He oh. might have... Oh, stepped yeah. out of bounds uh, prior to catching the ball or may have dropped it. The the uh, the play happened on the far side of the field from where we're stationed. Yeah, it was hard to see for sure. Uh, but none, but as a reminder, the Panthers quarterback not only is a DB, but also their punter, as well as the quarterback. He does it all, ladies and gentlemen. 
Mustangs uh, receivers are on the 37 yard line. And oh, it was a direct snap. No. And tripped up. So the Mustangs are going to have some good field position there, right? Gutsy play call for the Panthers, trying to catch the Mustangs off guard. But their special teams have been sharp all day. Their defense has been stout for the most part. Just two play, big plays given up for the scores. But on the, the, the usual play, they've been good at stopping uh, the Panthers. So change of possession, our Mustangs in good field position down there on uh, around the 30-yard line. Let's see couple, what they come up with. A couple yards out from the red zone. Might be their best field position of the day. Yeah, good point. Quick quick toss. Lorenzo with the ball. is out. Right. Nice gain by him. Number nine for the Panthers with the tackle. A touchdown saving tackle. Yeah. Lorenzen had a full head of steam. Shane or blue. Is that nine? I can't tell. I can't read it. Even with the lights on, it's hard to see these numbers here for the Perth Amboy roster. I believe it's uh, Ronald Estevez. Ah, okay. First down from the 17 yard line. They're starting to get into a point where I can't see. I'm going to have to stand up. Don't We're... worry, I got you, brother. <laughs> Kennedy in the red zone for the first time today. Couple of yards there. Howell Jr. stopped her on the pitch. Yeah, yes, it is. QB is really hobbling. See him when he's coming out? I, I. Yeah, and the coach is trying to make it easier. I know he already got the sideline warning, so there's not, he can't go too far out on the field yeah, to meet I, his quarterback. Might start running. He might be running somebody in to tell the plays soon. Yeah, that's what I think he should be doing with these guys. Yeah, with him, he's got to hobble. It's getting worse and worse as the game goes on. Yeah, I'm with you. I think I'm going to stand up a little bit here. Second and eight from the Panthers, from the Mustangs. Red Quick zone. screen again to Lorenzen, and he's in for the score, I think. What's the indication? Yes. Touchdown, Mustangs. Oh, that, what was that? Oh, and, uh, a flag. Flag after the play. Uh, I assume it's from the uh, celebration in the end zone. Yeah, we don't. We really don't need that. But I believe uh, the play was called dead, so I believe the touchdown will stand. Might have been a little chattering going on here. Russ are still discussing it. Sportsman like against okay. the Panthers. All right, while well, this, it is against the Panthers, so that's great, that moves it up. I wonder if the Mustangs are gonna go for two now. This is the play that, all right, they're settling. We're going to uh, watch the. They gonna... did signal uh, Perth Amboy on the field, but it looks like with the yardage going back, it looks like the uh, the unsportsman like was against Kennedy. All right, we're, we're going to reversing course. <laughs> okay, here is the uh, here's the play. That's the pass to Lorenzen. And oh no, that was a couple of plays before. That's not the same play. So, quick explanation on the field: it was an unsportsman like penalty on both teams, so the penalty's offset and the uh, yardage remains the same. PAT good for good. Kennedy. Good, all right. So we got ourselves a game here. Six point ball game. 33 seconds left in the third quarter. And it's Friday night lights, baby. Yeah, man. And I think, you know, you and I have had this discussion and I think we've just proved it on that drive. Mustangs got to get the ball in Grant Lorenzen's hands. Yes. Here's the replay of the touchdown, folks. Let's watch this. Same play that he got big yardage on before. He makes things happen. Nice blocking out there. Uh, shout out to uh, number 55 who got out in front and showed some blocking there. And that's uh, EJ Kaminsky. Nice job, EJ. And the Stangs will be kicking off the Perth Amboy now. And there's 33 seconds, as Stefan said, in the third period. Um, 
So we've got ourselves a ball game. It's back to a six-point lead. Both teams showing that they have the capability. And I know the Panthers had a little pep in their step uh, last time on offense, and uh, they had the miss handoff. They had a few negative plays, and now uh, they have to, uh, I assume they're going to play to manage the clock. They don't want the ball back in Kennedy's hands. They're hot now on offense. Yeah, yeah, they definitely seem to be. We'll, we'll see how this all shakes out, but uh, definitely a little momentum here in the third period. We looked like uh, Perth Amboy was really getting it together, and then that attempt to go on fourth down with that fake punt, and then the Mustangs capitalized it. That could have been a, that could be the pivotal point in the game here. We'll have to see how it goes. Absolutely, a nice uh, kick. Short though, they're going to have good field position. Decent eight-yard return on the short kick, and Panthers ball. Yeah, almost at midfield. And uh, Perez Quiano was the kicker on that. They've got a couple of players on both sides of the team that do a, a few different jobs for the team. So, wow, talk about good field position, 46-yard line there. One play, you could be, you know, on the other side. It's uh, on the replay, the kids spun the ball in the end zone. So they enforced it, the kick all right, let's see what the Panthers got here. They got trips to our side of the field, closest to the press box. And Fake a read Hannah. option. Yep, and there he goes, man. Once he gets some momentum, wow. One play. Good chunk play. Bradshaw, that was just, uh, that was that read option, right? Fake the handoff up the middle and... You know, what makes that play, Stefan, the, the, that handoff up the middle has had success. Exactly. So you got to respect it. Absolutely. And then when he pulls it in, and boy, once that guy, uh, he gets some, some energy going, he's hard to bring down. And that's the first time we've seen Lavon with the ball in open field, and he's a nimble ball carrier. And at 6'4", not an easy man to bring down. No, absolutely. And that's we're mo moving into the fourth quarter now. So we've got some excitement in Perth Amboy very quickly in scoring positions as we, as we flip the sides of the field here. And the, uh, the lights are clearly the reason why we're playing right now. It just seems like a few minutes ago it was dusk, but now it's clearly nighttime. And I know we strive to get things right. So on the kickoff, uh, it was 15 yards back, so it looked like the unsportsmanlike penalty in the end zone was enforced on the kickoff. Kickoff, okay. So Kennedy kicked, uh, that's why the kick looked shorter. Yeah. Kenny was kicking from 15 yards back, and that plays into the field position. Uh, the Panthers are in now based on that penalty in the end zone. And it, yep, yep, and it made uh, it made, had an impact on the way things are going. So the Mustangs got their backs against the wall here. We've got to step it up after a nice, uh, a nice, really serious. Uh, on offense by the Mustangs, and, and in particular, uh, Lorenz in there. Grant had two big, really big plays. Nice blocking for Grant up front by the big boys. We mentioned them a little earlier. So we've got ourselves the final corner here. Per Tampa with the ball and moving on a first down. Mustang showing a little blitz here. And this time he does hand it off. Trying to cut to the edge to get back the yardage he lost. Doesn't quite get there. Looks like a two or three yard. Yep. Loss on the play. Enrique's on that run, but he had nowhere to go. Nice job by the Stangs. Good job by the defense, setting the edge on both sides of the field. I know a lot of kids, I don't know if it's playing NCAA football are mad and they think cutting backwards sometimes will uh, regain what they lost. And sometimes yeah. you just have to put your head down, pick the one, two yard gain. North and, and live south. For another day. North yeah. and south, North man. North and south, yeah, absolutely. And boy, in trips formation on the right side of the field, closest to us, but they are in scoring range. And quarterback keeps the ball. And he stays in bounds, and it looks like it's a Panthers touchdown. 
Looks like he was threading the yes, sideline, but stayed in bounds the entire time. Absolutely. Le'Veon Malthazar. Once again, you know, you've got those. Uh, if you've got a playmaker, you got to put the ball in his hands. That's what you got to do, and that's that's what they did right there. So we've seen Le'Veon get the job done by land and by air, and the only thing's missing now is by sea. <laughs> Perth Amboy is the city by the bay. Yes, indeed. Well, let's hope the bay stays over there and, <laughs> and the rain stays up, because right now it's beautiful. Absolutely. Alrighty, Panthers setting up for the extra point attempt. They missed their first PAT, made the second, and hoping for success on the third. Chris Lopez Barrera with the kick, and it looks good, but there's whistles. Of course there's whistles. Somebody called the timeout because I don't. Oh, there's the flag all the way down here. Somebody must have been offsides. I think it's either offsides or encroachment on the Mustang. So that's going to bring it a little closer, giving the, must, the uh, Panthers the opportunity to go for two if they choose to. All right. The ball goes from the two yard line to the one yard line. Five. Look, and they're going for two. They're yeah. changing the personnel. They could have declined the penalty. Obviously, they didn't. And uh, the PAT was good, but they'll go for two on the play. They're bringing out their offense. That was the best extra point. The whole process was very smooth. The kid kicked the ball right through there. Now and what's going on? Oh, boy. Timeout. I think there's too many men on the field. I don't know. Uh, number 10's coming out and 54's going in. Did they call timeout just to do that? Or maybe an equipment issue. We just don't oh, know. Oh, right, right, right. It could be. Yeah, it could have been an equipment. Good call, Stefan. Good call. All right, here we go. We've got the offense in there for the Stang, uh, for the pa Panthers. And another uh, direct snap to the quarterback. And it looks like a successful two-point conversion for the Panthers. However, that was number 10. So that was uh, Isaac Gordon, who's right? Wasn't yeah, that was, number 10? Yeah. yeah. Came into the game and made a play. Points are points, and now we're at 21-7. Panthers up on the day. With 11 minutes left, Kennedy needs uh, two quick scores and some stout defense. Uh, to all right, folks, let's take a look while we have some time for the touchdown. Here he is. Threading the needle, as you said, on the sideline. Very close, but, man, that's a... Stays in. He's a big Shoulders dude. level. Le'Veon Balthazar really showing off his stuff on that play. And then, interesting, number 10, Isaac Gordon comes in for the uh, two-point conversion. So... Let's take a look at that two-point conversion. Notice that's number 10 there. And he doesn't do anything fancy and just runs right up there. Balcazar was on the field for a play split out as a wide receiver. Yeah. And he just came right in and, and did nothing fancy, but he ran over a few people to get in there. Absolutely. So. But uh, Balcazar, I said it again, and I'll say it, uh, I'll say it again. Uh, will be a player to watch in the county after today's game. He has uh, the talent with his legs. He has the talent with his arms. Absolutely. 6'4", 215. He's a force. He's a force. And if you're a college scout, this might be the uh, name to know when the ball falls off the tee. Wind is starting to get active in the game. Yep. You can see the on the, on the home side, there's some Mustang flags up, and they're all moving around. It seems to be swirling, too. It's not going in one direction. Wouldn't be surprised if they attempt a squib kick here, and they do. Chris Lopez Barrera. Boy, that goes deep for a squib kick. Squib kick. Number 11, twisting and turning. Lorenzen making what he can, and a little extracurricular after the play. Nothing called by the referee, and it will be Mustang ball. A couple of big plays by big players, right, on both sides. That, you know. 
I mean, Le'Veon, Le'Veon has proved himself, as you, you just mentioned, and Lorenzen on the other side. All right, let's take a look at that kickoff uh, return real quick before the start of the play. Grant really sees some opening, makes something, twisting and turning, and then finally gets brought out. And here we go. This is live now, folks, with a uh, – no. That could be a fumble. And it That's wasn't a, a live forward ball. pass. It was a live ball dropped by Lorenzen. Um, it, the ball was not thrown forward, so it was oh, a, a that, lateral more so than a pass. Yep, that's a detrimental play. And I, I, I don't want to blame it on anybody, but I don't, I don't know. That ball was down around the ankles, at least the shins. It was awful low. It's a tough play because we know Lorenzen is a star on the field. The Panthers' defense knows it, so when he shifted in motion, the defense shifted with him, and uh, a lot of pressure on that play. Yeah, I think the, the play had a chance if the ball was up around the numbers. Uh, but he was under a lot of pressure. They, they, they sniffed it out, and they were coming. And the ball on the Mustangs' 15-yard line. Panthers are in the red zone. This is big-time pressure on the uh, Kennedy defense here. Oh, and they choose to give it to him, and he stopped. Nice tackle up front. Now they are in field goal range, and the kicker's shown some range on the PATs, going far beyond the post and the kick, so it is possible for Thamboy of Stymied on offense does settle for a field goal to put some points on the board. Absolutely. A little bit over 10 minutes left in the fourth period. Panthers break the huddle. Two receivers right, one left. Two backs in the backfield. Quarterback gets the ball. Uh, and drop the hand off. He scoops it up. And he gets taken down by number eight, Naeem Muse. Nice play by Naeem there. It didn't look like a read option on the play. It looked like a straight handoff, and the, and the running back uh, just dropped it when he got the ball. Yeah. Uh, happened two drives ago. And another flag on the play. Just saw number three, Isaiah Walker, go in the defense. Um, both teams were still in their huddle, so I don't know if it will be a uh, unsportsmanlike for words exchanged again. And that's what it is. It's against the Mustang, so they'll go back 15 yards or half the distance to the end zone, I believe, at this distance. Um, be a first down for the Panthers, and it looks like I can't see on the – on the seven yard line, maybe? Yeah, yep, I think you're absolutely right. It's where the ball is. What's Third it? down, excuse me, not a, it, sh it should be a first down. They didn't change the markers. Should be an automatic first down on unsportsmanlike. Yep, and what's the chances of Le'Veon keeping the ball? I would say high, but I'm not a betting man. Now, my DraftKings account will uh, tell me that. Uh, and it looks like touchdown. Panthers waiting for the yep, call. There it is. Oh boy. That was a nice play. Yeah, I, I might have to, I might be a little rusty. I might have to go back to the rule book, but I could have swore after an unsportsman like penalty, it's an automatic yeah, first down. I but so they too. ruled it a third and three on the field, but didn't matter for the Panthers. As they scored on the very next play. Nine minutes to go in the game. Chris Lopez Barrera in there to attempt the extra point. We know he's got the leg because we've seen it. Yeah, the only miss, as you pointed out earlier in the game, looked like it was deflected off a of Kennedy hand. Uh, but he's been solid ever since. Oh, and oh, 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 oh. Looks bad snap, falls on top. Good play. He didn't want to try to do anything heroic and then have. Better be safe than sorry is the motto, and it was followed there. Still a 20-point lead for the Panthers, 27-7 is the score. 
but nine minutes left in the fourth quarter. Another and flag on the field. No action, so it looks like another in sportsman like penalty. Yeah, why would the why would the Perth Amboy players be all the way on this sideline? I, you know, so it I, looks like it'll be on the Panthers. Coach is coming out talking to number uh, 15, Emmanuel Moreno. But you just have to wonder what is Perth Amboy doing all the way over on this side in the first place. All right, folks, we have a little time here. Let's look at the replay of the touchdown. It's number 12 for Perth Amboy, muscling his way down there. Yeah, quite the collision at the end zone, but his momentum pushes him right forward inside. Albin Castano was the Perth Amboy player to score that touchdown and put the Panthers up by 20. So just like previously, the 15 yards should be... Uh, uh, enforced on the kickoff with the Panthers pushed back 15 yards. Favorable field position should be upcoming for the Mustangs. I wonder if we're going to see some uh, some throwing by the quarterback for Kennedy, trying to get back into the game quickly. I mean, there is nine minutes in the game, but, uh, you know, based on what we've seen so far, 20 points is a lot to catch up on, but we'll see how it goes. It is high school football, and anything can happen. Yes, magic can happen. Remember my junior year playoff football against Irvington? I believe we scored, it was, uh, I believe, uh, 17 points in three minutes. Wow. To come back and win the game. Renson with the ball. He sees a hole. He's running up the field. It's pushed out of bounds around the Panthers' 37-yard line, and another penalty flag on the field. And that was the kicker that uh, that's, that's made that tackle. That was number 24, Lopez Barrera. The refs are discussing what the call is, but we've had a spurt of unsportsmanlike calls um, waiting for the hand signals. We don't have mics on the referees uh, this evening, so we're doing our best out here. Looks like it's an unsportsmanlike on both teams. Uh, Offsetting that's... penalties, so it's a... So there's no loss of yardage on the play. Ball looks like it's on the Panthers. 36 yard line. A lot of unsportsmanlike penalties. Um, hopefully, no one gets disqualified in this game. Yeah. Only uh, so early. Nine Certainly. minutes to game to go. Nothing much. Nothing should be lost this early in the season. Let's keep players eligible. Trotman with the snap, looks to throw, stares down Lorenzen, and got him deep, and he oh. drops the ball. Incomplete pass, it was in his hands. Wow, that was a nice play by that defender. Yeah, and the Perth Amboy defender came late and knocked it right out of his hands. Yeah. It looked like he was doing a short route, and then he, he went deep. Nicely thrown ball. Nicely thrown yeah. ball on time. Pedro Felix was the defender for the Panthers. Let's give Pedro a little shout out. No, there. didn't give up on the play at all. Trotman's uh, his uh, right ankle starting to give him trouble again as he's limping out from the huddle. It's definitely, if there was an Iron Man award for the game, it would definitely go to him. Hands it off. Running back finds a hole for a good game. Muse, no, I am Muse on that run, nicely done. About a yard short from the first down, looks like a second and one. Third and one, excuse me. Hard to see the yard markers from across the field. Plenty of time still in the game. Kennedy looking to make something happen. Trotman rolls oh, out. He's wrapped up. It. He just bumped one too many times. By the entire Panthers defensive line. <laughs> All right, everybody back away. Let's 
All right, easy does. It. Some, you know, I was a little. You know, they did blow the whistle. Uh, it looks like an unsportsmanlike will be called on the Panthers. Number 53 seemed to be chatting it up a little bit there. And there is a Mustang player down on the field. Assume this late in the game could be cramping. Yeah, it but, feels cool to us, but it's the players are out there. Yeah, yeah. they're doing all the hard work. I will say, uh, on the play, they did call the ball dead before they slammed the quarterback to the ground, and they didn't call a uh, unnecessary roughness on that. No, no and, both quarterbacks have taken some hard hits with the ball yep, and in also, and out of their hands. Also, the Perth Amboy players were doing a good job of keeping number 53 away, so it had to be something he shouted out. Right. Because there was no physical contact after the play was blown dead, right? Correct. I think he was just sticking up for his quarterback. Six. Six. Six on sportsman like penalties oh, so far in this game. Wow, that's unbelievable. Yeah, that's a lot. Um, they play it down on the field, so they haven't adjusted the yard marker, but it was a, a, th a third and one turned into a fourth and one, and with the 15 yards tacked on, it should be a first down for the Mustangs. Yeah, you know, we're up here in the press box, and Coach Contala just told us, you know, there's really – that's something you really have to control. That's controllable. Yes. You know what I mean? There are certain things in the game that. And I'm sure in the huddle, both uh, coaches are reminding their players to keep their composure. A lot of game left to play. And, of course, a lot of season left. You don't want any suspensions because, you know, the NJSIA reviews all this stuff. Oh, yeah. After the game. And the Mustangs are coming out on the ball. And it's Fourth and seven, and the unsportsmanlike was called, and I'm a little confused on the yardage, but nonetheless, they go for him first down. Interception. Yeah, it looks like he, that, that one, it looks like he just threw into the crowd there. That wasn't on the panel. I don't know. So they have the ball deep in their own territory. It looks like prior to the inception, the unsportsmanlike call must have been enforced against the Mustangs. And yeah, it resulted that. in a fourth and seven, which resulted in an interception. Um, it's hard to see the hand signals from the referees on the field, so we're doing our best judgments on what the calls and the positions may be. Yeah, that, that definitely was unusual. I mean, there, I couldn't figure that one out. Panthers. Panthers will now be coming out of their own end zone looking to prevent a safety. Seven minutes left. They just want to keep the call, clock rolling, warm up the buses, and head back home. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't understand what happened on that sequence there with that unsportsmanlike and how it was how it was appropriated. Yeah, I'll be going back through the rule book this Labor Day weekend, so I'm a little sharper throughout the season. <laughs> a lot of rule changes occur in that in the off season, so getting adjusted to that. But yeah, yeah, absolutely. A lot of officials on the field they have more eyes than we do, so they're making the hopefully the right calls. Looks like a four-yard rush on the play. Should be second and six. Crowd still strong on both sides. Yeah. Panthers really spreading out the field here. And it looks like they have an unlimited play clock. It's winding down. The ref giving the signal. And the ball oh. pops out late, and the Mustangs recover it. I don't know if it was ruled a fumble on the field. Wow. I didn't see the blue flag that came comes out usually yeah. on the fumble. Boy, that ball popped up in the air. It was like a water bell in pit. Anyway, it was recovered by a Panther. Yeah. So it will stay Panther's ball. Cesar Barquez. With a heads-up play for the Panthers to fall on that ball. Yeah, and popped out like a hot cake out yeah, of the oven. Yeah, I man, it jumped up out there. Here comes the quarterback running about 20 yards just to call the play. 
Under six minutes to go now in the fourth quarter, and we have a third down and six for the Panthers. And there's flags flying. Was there a flag flying or is it a timeout? I see the Mustangs going right to the sideline, so it was a timeout. Looks like a timeout before the delay of game. Yeah, that's what it was. So a little bit of a lopsided play now, 20-point game here. And yeah, we've seen so many yellow flags tonight. Anytime we see the glance of it, we just jump up. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So the start of the 2024 season in beautiful late August here in Island at John F. Kennedy Memorial Stadium. It's a beautiful setting. Lights are on on the uh, baseball field to the end zone to our left as we look out. Absolutely. Labor Day weekend. Any plans this weekend? Uh, the old family getting together and, uh, you know, throw the grandkids around a little bit. Oh. Well, not the littlest ones, maybe the older ones. <laughs> you scared me there for a second, yeah. you know. I trust you. I trust you. <laughs> All right. So here we go. The Panthers are coming back out. Third and four. Play's been blown live on the field, so the play clock is rolling. Everybody's adjusting. Straight handoff, stuffed in the backfield by Kennedy. So we'll have a fourth down, should be, right? Chris Lopez, oh, excuse me, it was Alejandro Montavo for the Mustangs on that tackle. Met him right at the line of scrimmage. Fourth down. Nice job by Alejandro there. That was a nice tackle. So we're going to see the Panthers switch their personnel. They're looking to punt. Letting the clock chip away first. And we got flags on the field. There are players still coming on and off the field on both sides. Yep, too many men on the field. I think that was the indication. So her Thamboy will take a five yard jaunt backwards. Oh boy. All right, Mustangs, now's your time. See if Mustangs change their uh, personnel, maybe do a punt block or attempt one. Make it interesting. And pay attention to the A gaps and well covered. Oh, and it's blocked. Recovered in the end zone by the Panthers. It'll go for a Mustang safety. It was a safety and they're, and they're gonna get the ball. So that could help. Well, that will bring the score to 27 to nine. A safety punt occurs after the safety. And it looked like the uh, the uh, too many men on the field or illegal substitution or whatever it may have been couldn't see the hand signal. Yeah, there looked like the Panthers had a lot of confusion going on as to exactly what they want to do. And uh, to Kennedy's advantage. Let's take a look at this uh, block punt here. Folks, we have the replay. Nice block. Who, who was the person that blocked it? I can't see that number. Number 10. Okay. Braylon Diaz for the Mustangs with the block. Very nice job. Nice job by Braylon there. And he came off the field holding his stomach, so he must have took a little shot there. He's on the sidelines, bent over. And with the safety, it, the, the game's not fully out the graphs no. for the Mustangs. Some magic could happen. A, a nice punt return, good field position, a quick score. No, no penalties. No penalties. Let's start with that. <laughs> now let's not get crazy. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna get good field position. I believe the Panthers have the ability to punt or kick whatever they want. But as you said, they'll probably punt because you have better hang time to get down and cover. So Le'Veon punting the ball after the safety. Nice high punt above the lights. Good hang time, good catch by the Mustang player. 
Cuts to the outside and comes back in. Down at the Panther 47 yard line. Not bad field position to be a Mustang. No, not at all. And they look to take advantage of the good field position. About 20 odd yards out from the red zone. 47 from the end zone. And a couple big plays, they can make this a game in a short period of time. Yeah, if they can get a quick score, that'll, that'll make a difference. Okay, Lorenzen's on our, our side here. One-on-one -on -one coverage. We got a quarterback switch in here. Number 13's back in the game. Kennedy chooses to run it. I think, you know, after the last offensive drive, we saw the quarterback limping pretty hard. So it looks like Coach may be just protecting the health of his player early on in the season. Yeah. Um, number 13 seems to be a capable quarterback for Kennedy. He did air the ball out a few times. Yep, Aiden Roach. Earlier in the first half and managed the offense well. Big number 77, Melvin Tejado in on the offensive line for the Stangs. Great tackle. Mustang with the trips. And once again, Grant Lorenzen all by himself here on the short side of the field. I think they're looking for a play to call. There seems to be some confusion here. You don't want to have this play. Get it. There we go. Okay. Get it off in the nick of time. There's one for Lorenzen. Gets out of bounds, stops the clock. Close to a first down. Number 23, Chanel Henderson for the Panthers in on that play. Looks like third and two down on the field. Into the huddle they go with the play call. Third down and two yards to go. Yep, 345 to go in the game. We'd like to see a little bit more hustle from the Panthers. In, I mean, from the, Mustang. the Mustangs in and out of the huddle right now. Yeah, little for Thamboy, defense not changing their call. Looks like a base cover one, man coverage. And they'll play their chances like that. Another yeah. slick inside handoff. Yeah. Muse with the first down. Nice job. Inside the 30 yard line to the 28. First down. And the Mustangs obviously looking to score, moving the ball down the field, but not much effort into stopping the clock. So it's just, it just looks like it's take what you can mode. Yeah. Yep. Let's collect the film and improve for the season. Right, right. Most of the stars outside of the quarterback still on the field. Nice bubble pass. Misses a tackle. Stays up. Stayed, yeah, stayed up. Did a nice job of staying on his feet. Kept his feet moving. That's the most important thing you can do as a ball carrier. No question. And it's going to be a second and eight. Second out of eight yards to go. Clock ticking down, 2.30 to go in the game. We're now two-minute warning in high school football yet. Yeah. Well, we'll warn you. <laughs> it's almost two minutes, folks. That's a two-minute warning. We got the trips here for the Stangs to our side of the field. Lorenzen by himself on the other side. Another good hard nose run by Muse. Doing an admirable job filling in for uh, Howell Jr. Yep. And we're spread way out. Lorenzen on our side, single coverage. High snap, kick it out to Lorenzen. Lorenzen's fighting his way to push forward, cuts through. Still fighting forward, still on his feet. Wow, Down maybe effort. around the four yard line. Great effort by Grant on that play. Great effort. Showing a lot there. 
still like to see him get in and out of the huddle a little quicker just to get that momentum going. Bye, Justin. Okay. Number uh, 65 going into the game. Yeah, I just hope they have time. So I'd like to see them get one more score before time expires. Yeah. They definitely worked hard for it, this drive. Leon Prince. Another bubble screen. Pushes forward, legs churning. Close. And that might have been a neutral play. 30, Caught the ball behind the line. Yep, 30 seconds to go in the game here. Under 30 seconds. It doesn't look like the coach will call a timeout to try to score. The clock's still ticking. Geez, I hope to get this playoff. Don't know. The, there's no... Uh, uh, score board in the in this in this side of the end zone, so the quarterback doesn't know how much time is left. The far end official indicated that uh, Perth Amboy might have lined up in the neutral zone. That just brings Kennedy a little bit closer. With that's it. The game's over. The clock has expired. I think they once they called it. That's it. That's the game. So their final score, 27 for Perth Amboy, 9 for JFK. Stefan Lowey, good good time with you. Good to Always spend a great time, time, with, time you. with you, brother. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. And, and folks, we hope you enjoyed the game. If you're a Mustang fan, we've got something to look forward to. There was a lot of good action there. And congratulations to Perth Amboy in a game well played. So again, Stefan and Greg signing off, everybody. We'll see you again soon. Good night. Have a good Labor Day weekend, everybody.